piece of MDF has three guides for me. This is the center line. That will be the lowest point of the rotation of the cutter. And then each of these two lines lines up with the breaker bars on the Woodmaster so that if I have the breaker bars lined up with these two lines, I'll know that my guide is centered up in the machine. The first thing that I'm going to do is make sure that this curve piece is exactly centered between the two lines. and put one screw right in the middle. Then I'll measure from the outside edge and get it lined up and parallel that way. I always put three screws to hold these guide boards in place so that if even something binds up a little bit and one of the screws were to break, the molding should still continue to run through. Of course, I only started doing that after I had one break and ruined a big piece. And I don't really want this to be absolutely tight. Having a little bit of a gap is a good thing. all that's really important is at the lowest point of the cutter knife swing that this be centered up and square with the cutter. I always use a single knife because I'm going to be running really slow anyway. It's much cheaper just to buy one knife to run a profile than to have three. However, if for some reason you wanted to run three, the simplest way to set them would be to cut a stick that we're, would set against the outside of the machine and go over to the knife, and then by pushing each knife over against the stick, you'd be setting them equally from the edge. Now, what I'm going to do, and I can usually just do this visually, I'm going to slide this over until these cutter bars line up with those two marks. You always want to remember when you're setting this knife, it would fit in there either direction, but you want to set it up so that the beveled surface is towards the end feed side and the flat side of the knife is towards the out feed side. It's actually going to cut like this. I'm going to take this piece of molding, slide it up underneath. Still going to have to come up a little bit more. And if I didn't have a piece of molding, I would just have to eyeball it in the profile. Eyeball the profile to line up with the guides. Slide quite a ways over. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to line that, line the profile up with our sample piece. Go ahead and raise the bed up a couple of cranks so I can be a little more accurate. So that's right where I want to be. Now I'm going to take this Allen wrench. Thank you, Ken. Now I kind of rest my hand on top of this. You want to be careful because that edge is sharp. But keep a little bit of pressure down so that as this gib tightens up, it doesn't jack one side or the other of the knife around. Now again, this is set up. Remember the thin edge of our casing trim for around a window or door is always going to be to the inside of the radius. There are some times when you make a piece of curved molding where you need it to go the opposite direction. Just remember which way the piece of molding is going to be going when you set up your guides. Looks like to get our profile right, we're going to need to come I think that's going to be real close to the depth. I'm 
We'll give it about a half a crank, maybe a third of a crank more. Since I'm only using one profile knife, I'm going to need to set these counterbalance weights in place. And line them up. And boy, it's really important to make absolutely certain that you get all these tightened in well. And if you're running a whole lot of molding, if you've run, oh, I don't know, for a couple hours or so, you may want to stop and just recheck and make sure you've got everything tight. And remember, too, don't ever run the machine without the hood in place. Now that I've got the knife set, I'm going to go ahead and do a test run with only the feed rollers going. Now, it might be a good idea. This bedboard had quite a bit of wax on it because most of the time when I'm running trim, I'll wax the bedboard. But if you're doing a brand new setup or a brand new bedboard, you might want to take some paraffin or candle wax and just wax the bedboard. Okay. Now that the knife's set, I'm going to do a trial run with only the feed rollers going. Make sure that the knife's in the up position so that it doesn't dig into the blank when you're running it through on the test run. If the board happens to get hung up during the test run, just count the number of cranks that you go backwards, probably 10 or 15 to lower the bed, and you can get back to your starting position by just making the same number of cranks coming back up and you'll still be set and ready to go. Okay, we've run all the tests, we've set our guides, now it's time for the really big moment. As I said, I've made hundreds, probably thousands of pieces of curved trim, but I never get tired. Matter of fact, it still excites me to see that beautiful piece of trim coming out the back end of the molder. I'm going to go ahead and put some wing nuts on to lock the hood down, and we'll be ready to go. Remember, don't ever plug the machine in with a cutter head until you've got the hood back on the machine. I'm going to be running pretty slow when I machine this piece, probably no more than four or five feet a minute. I want to get the very best cut I can by getting the most knife cuts per inch. It's extremely important to have good dust collection because if the chips don't get sucked out, the out feed roller will actually press the chips back into the profile. About a few feet a minute. Turn the machine on. 